Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Well, good evening. The Nurses' Union has condemned a plan to offload patients from ambulances to emergency departments in just 60 minutes. The government says it will get more paramedics back into the community faster, but health unions worry it will only make bed block and ED pressures worse. Reckless. That's how Tasmania's Nurses and Midwives Union has described the Health Minister's new plan to reduce transfer of care delays. It is simply saying we are moving patients off an ambulance ramp into an overcrowded, overstretched, understaffed emergency department and therefore we solved ambulance ramping. That is not the case. The procedure will ensure a maximum of 60 minutes for patients arriving by ambulance to be transferred into an emergency department. It's designed to get paramedics back on the road and reduce ramping. It's important that we get all the access and flow when it comes to our hospital throughput right from triple zero right through to discharge. The Health and Community Services Union say it will save lives. But we also need to see that the emergency department is adequately uh, supported and staffed and that the bed block situation is actually uh, fixed. The AMA calling for a holistic approach from tackling GP shortages so less people present to EDs to dealing with patients ready to be transferred to care post-hospital. So we need to create the beds in the hospital and so you either build more acute hospital beds, which we probably need some of, but what we actually need is the destination beds from the go-to once they've had that done. The Nurses Union has now written to Health Minister Guy Barnett seeking a commitment to a phased-in plan which allows them to pivot to the influx. He's now got a week to respond, the group threatening industrial action if he doesn't. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. We're still no closer to knowing whether an early state election will be called. The Premier met face to face with independents John Tucker and Lara Alexander today for the first time since a threat of an early poll was floated. While some ground was made, both former Liberals look set to reject a proposed new agreement. After a week of posturing and talking through the media, D-Day finally arrived. The weekly meeting between Jeremy Rockcliffe and his rogue independents far from routine this time around. The future of the government up in the air, following a public spat between the trio. We don't know until the Premier puts what he wants to land on the table. I hope that for everyone's benefit that um, it's, this whole crisis is going to be resolved. Emerging more than an hour later, the duo were in a more positive mood, a threat in no-confidence motion off the table. I've got an assurance from the Premier today that he is going to honour the parliamentary decisions. So that has now been withdrawn. After receiving assurances on the animal cruelty saga and the planning process for the AFL High Performance Centre will be followed. Work immediately, immediately means to me that you're going to get shovels in the ground and start work. Planning is totally different. However, both still won't sign the proposed new confidence and supply agreement. I never had a problem with the agreement that we struck with the Premier before. I personally and John have not requested for that agreement to be dissolved. The Premier this afternoon thanking them for the meeting. Prior to his catch up with the two independents, Mr Rockcliffe enjoyed some tucker with local school children. While hoping it's not a last supper, he also gave a pointed reminder to the duo about their previous loyalties. John and Lara were elected uh, as Liberals, as Liberals in 2021. Tension though remains after the Premier defended his right to seek a new arrangement. We have delivered our side of the agreement. What we have here is repeated threats, if you like, uh, from uh, John and Lara around confidence and supply. Mrs Alexander firing back during their meeting. And I did ask him today, could you please, please show me in the media where I, Lara Alexander, have said I'm withdrawing uh, supply and confidence to you. Federal and state Labor once again lashed the Premier. I think most Tasmanians want to see the Premier either get on with it and shut up or put up. The responsibility for the loss of majority has to go to Jeremy Rockley. A weekend of reflection ahead for all when an election is called in the hands of Jeremy Rockcliffe. The Premier is the only one that can decide when an election is called. And reporter John Hunt joins us from Parliament House now. John, when will we know if we're off to the polls? 
Well, it's not yet clear, Kim, but one thing is for certain. It won't be this week. Tasmanians will be left hanging in the air for at least until next week. Speculation had mounted the Premier could ask for an election as early as this afternoon, but Jeremy Rockcliffe confirmed today he won't go to the Governor over the weekend, wanting to mull over what was discussed at today's meeting and also consult with colleagues about the next move. I'm going to ensure that I take time to consider uh, what John and Lara uh, put on the table, and it's important. Now, adding to the intrigue, the Premier has just released a statement about the assurances given to Mr Tucker. It reads, I've noted various claims made by Mr Tucker to the media this afternoon regarding the High Performance Centre, animal welfare and parliamentary processes. This is disappointing. I wish to be clear, I did no more than reiterate my position on these matters as outlined in my letters to Mr Tucker and Mrs Alexander last Thursday. Uh, so, Kim, after a week of blustering from all parties, we're no closer to knowing whether the trio can patch up their differences or an election is needed. Tasmanian property sales dropped about 10% last year compared to 2022, according to the Real Estates Institute's quarterly data. Almost 800 homes changed hands for a million dollars or more, 15% fewer than the previous year. The reality is we're coming down off those highs of 2020, 2021 and it's interesting that the volume of sales is still the third highest on record, so pluses and minuses in the last 12 months. Meanwhile, a new subdivision at Georgetown is promising affordable homes to northern buyers but they're being snapped up quickly with just 15 of 46 lots still available. Planning Minister Michael Ferguson today inspecting the development. Global movie star and environmentalist Leonardo DiCaprio has called for the protection of the swift parrot and an end to native forest logging in Tasmania. In an Instagram post, the Hollywood heavyweight wrote, Australian conservationists had won a temporary injunction to stop logging in Tasmania's nesting sites of the critically endangered swift parrot. The Bob Brown Foundation said the post had put Tasmania on the map and made the plight of the swift parrot well and truly global. The Tasmanian Greens also welcomed the Academy Award winner's support. In the midst of a housing crisis, more Tasmanians have been able to secure their first home. The Housing Minister today announcing more than 1,300 Tasmanians, 630 of those in Hobart, have made use of the Home Guarantee Scheme. We now know that uh, one in, about one in three first home buyers actually uses the Federal Government Scheme. So it is helping those Australians that it should be helping get into home ownership. With persistent housing supply and stock issues, the federal government adamant it wants to do more, calling on other governing bodies to work collaboratively. Playing all the classics, from Swan Lake to Bluey, this is a rare treat for Glenview Primary School students, enjoying a special concert from the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra, the mini ensemble delighting the mini fans who also had a go at conducting. <laughs> Most of the children in the group that we brought hadn't heard an orchestra before, so being able to hear an orchestra, like a miniature orchestra like that, and hear that sound is fantastic for them. The free TSO performance is all about introducing young students to different musical instruments. Well, a home has been gutted by fire in the state's north. Crews from Launceston, Carrick and Westbury were called to the Carrick property just before 11 this morning. The blaze tore through the home, leaving the property's roof sagging. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Investigators have deemed the fire accidental and estimated the damaged bill to be around $700,000. Well, thousands of revellers have descended for a weekend of music and arts at the iconic Party in the Paddock Festival in northern Tasmania, with almost 200 artists from close to home and further afield set to perform. Crowds are also keen to strut their stuff. It's not quite fashions on the field, but crowds at Carrick are out to see and be seen. I'm living out like my childhood dress-up dreams right now. Sparkles aren't the only order of the day. Matching festival fits are the only way forward for some ticket holders. You've always got to come matching to festivals. I think 
That's how you find all your mates, because you're all wearing the same thing. With the stage set for 190 artists across four days, it's the biggest in the event's 12-year history. Party in the Paddock playing host to a mountain of local talent. We've never been a party in the paddock, so this will be a nice first experience for us. And yeah, we're just really grateful to be here, honestly. Music isn't the only draw card. We've got like an Elvis impersonator. We've got drag show performances. We've got a whip cracking expo. We've got magicians. We've got a lot. Including a spot of morning yoga for those up early enough. 10,000 people are expected through the gates this weekend. Organisers saying it's the event's local flavour which keeps people coming back. I think that local embedded culture here at Party in the Paddock is the key to our success. With festivities to run until Sunday, partiers are urged to stay safe and be sun smart. Are you guys wearing lots of sunscreen? Lots. Yes, we Head are. to toe covered. Annie Green, 7, Tasmania News. Well, Hobart City Council has officially launched this year's Taz Pride Festival, raising three flags outside Hobart's Town Hall this afternoon to a large group of supporters. Recognising the city's vibrancy and acceptance of Tasmania's diverse community, including all those who identify as LGBTIQA+. The festival is more than a decade old and will run for the month of February. A win tomorrow night against South East Melbourne will guarantee the Jackies a finals berth. Tasmania is planning on playing as if the Round 19 clash is the big dance. And while Phoenix don't have anything to play for, already ruled out of finals, they have beaten the Jackies twice this season. They're playing very well. And a lot of those young guys are out there swinging with, uh, with no consequences. and They're shooting the ball well. They've got the green light. They're making plays. And uh, you can see them rally around each other. Majok Dang, who hasn't played since their Christmas Day encounter with the Phoenix, still isn't fit, but has just returned to the training court. The Tigers have cruised to their third Marsh Cup victory with an emphatic five-wicket win over the Bulls. 61 off 68 from player of the match Caleb Jewell, setting Tasmania on a fast track at the Gabba, beating the Bulls' 150-run target with a whole 23 overs to spare. They're now sitting fourth on the one-day ladder. Good evening. A relatively fine day in Hobart for the Tasmanian Derby Day, 25. 25 also for both Devonport and Burnie. Launceston, the state's top today with 28. Further out, friendly beaches recorded 25. Lowhead, St Helens, Bushy Park and Mariah Island all 24. Grove, 23. Flinders Island and Smithton, 22. King Island, 21. Liawini and Strawn, both 18 degrees. The visible satellite shows thin, low-level cloud over the west and south with minimal clouds seen about the northeast. Storms and scattered low to mid-level clouds sit over tropical parts of the Territory and western Queensland. Tomorrow a high will move across the state, a ridge sits over the southern half of the country. East to southeasterly winds 20 to 30 knots about the north. Southwesterly swells building up to 5.5 metres in the west and up to 6 metres in the south. A strong wind warning has been issued for the far northwest coast, the central north coast, Bank Strait and Franklin Sound. Tomorrow partly cloudy in Hobart 21, much the same for Medina 22. Sunny skies forecast for Oatlands 21. Launceston partial cloud 25, Devonport cloudy 21, Lyweenie 19 degrees. Cloudy also towards the west, Burnie 19, Strawn and Marawar 21. Grey skies also for the east and Helens 19, 20 degrees expected for both Swansea and Orford. Looking now to the three day forecast, Sunday fine with light winds and an afternoon sea breeze about coastal areas. Monday another fine day with possible morning fog and Tuesday fine before showers develop statewide in the afternoon with a chance of possible thunderstorms. Two mainland capital cities now warming up in Perth with a fine and sunny 41 degrees. Sunny also for Adelaide 31, Sydney a shower or two 26. Showers also for Brisbane 29, 27 and partly cloudy in Melbourne. Hobart partly cloudy currently 17 degrees, mostly sunny in Launceston with 25, partly cloudy in Devonport with 24. Now it's shaping up to be another busy weekend across the state, Kim, with a party in the paddock. Sounds like you've got your outfit sorted, girlfriend. And if you're looking for something else to do, check out the Waratah Wood Chopping Festival tomorrow. Both sound like good ideas. Thank you, Kai. You have a good weekend too. Well, that is all your news for this Friday, the 9th day of February. Thanks for joining us. Michael will join you over the weekend. But from now, on behalf of the entire 7 Tasmania Nightly News team, it is good night.